Hi, good evening, everybody. Are you able to hear me? Okay. We are going to go ahead and get started with our content for this week. Uh, this week we are going over signed numbers. And usually they're a little bit on the harder side because we don't use them often. Uh, usually if you're banking or deal with money, you might see them more frequently than anybody else. But usually we don't see them. Um, a copy of this was emailed to you. It's also found in our announcement uh, because it goes with kind of what we're discussing uh, in our weekly summary questions. Two of them ask you for what's the rule. So these are the rules, basically, uh, for why we add and subtract and et cetera. Okay, so let's start with addition and subtraction. Let me get my little pointy finger right here. Addition and subtraction. The reason that we add numbers is because they have the same sign. If they are both positive, we add them together and keep the positive sign. So 4 and 3, they're both positive, so it becomes a positive 7. If they are both negative, again, we just add them together and keep the negative sign. So we can sum up these two into one rule. If the signs are the same, we add the numbers together and keep their sign. So if the signs are the same, we add them together and keep their sign. The reason we add is because the signs are the same. It's not because there's a plus sign in between the two numbers, okay? That's just the sign of the number. So you have to look at the signs to determine what you're going to do if you're going to add or subtract. Okay, so we add because the signs are the same. We subtract because the signs are different. Okay, so let's look at our next one. If one number is negative and one number is positive, that is why we subtract. Okay, we subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the largest absolute value or the largest number, however you want to word it. So in our example here, we have a negative 4 and a positive 3. So we look at the numbers. We have a 3 and a 4. The 4 is bigger than the 3, and it has a negative sign in front of it, so the answer would be negative. And then we just subtract 4 minus 3. So our answer is negative 1. So again, we add because the signs are the same. We subtract because the signs are different. So again, for addition and subtraction, there are just two rules. If the signs are the same, we add the numbers and keep their sign. If the signs are different, we subtract, keep the sign of the largest absolute value. And that's it for addition and subtraction. Okay, so those are the two basic rules. One of the things we can do with addition and subtraction, however, is to check that we're doing it correctly. We can use a number line. So let's take a look at our first example. It says a positive 4 and a positive 3. So we start here on positive 4. And because the next number is a positive 3, positive numbers go to the right. So we would go 1, oops. No, it's all squiggly. One, two, three spaces, and we would get our seven. So the signs are the same, so we add them together and we get seven. Now this one starts at a negative four, which is right here. And the next number is a negative three. Negatives go to the left. So we would go to the left, one, two, three, and we are at negative seven. Again, the signs were the same, so we added them and kept the sign. So you can, you can use these to help you practice your rule uh, and also to check your work if you weren't sure about something. Now, the next one starts at negative 4, which is right here. And then it says positive 3. So am I going to go to the left three spaces or to the right three spaces? 
we're going to go to the right three spaces. So one, two, three, and we are at negative one. Now, you're going to see a lot of problems that sort of look like the last one we have here. I'm just using this one to show you how to use the number line. When we go over the actual questions, I'm going to show you an easy way to solve them, okay? But we're going to just use it as is for the number line, okay? So we start at our first number is negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. Then it says positive 5. So which direction am I going in? Right or left? Right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm sitting there at a positive 1. Now it says negative 6. So where am I going to go now? We're going to go to the left. That's right. So now I'm going to go to the left, 6 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops, I missed one. 5. Six. Okay. Then it says positive three. So now I'm going to go three the other way. One, two, three. And my answer is negative two. So you can use a number line to solve a problem like that. It does get a little confusing because there's a lot of it to go over. But it's a way to check your work, I would say, more than anything else. Okay. Are there any questions on the addition and subtraction of sign numbers? Remember, if the signs are the same, we add them together and keep their sign. If the signs are different, we subtract, keep the sign of the largest absolute value. Those are your two rules for addition and subtraction. Okay, now we're going to move on to multiplication and division. Uh, the book, this is how the book states multiplication and division. If there is an odd number of negatives, your answer is negative. If there's even, it's positive. And that's how they leave it. Um, I like to add just a little more. Uh, I like to say, because most of these items that we're going to be dealing with are only two of them. There's only two numbers. So I would like to say if we had a positive number and it's being multiplied or divided by a positive number, then our answer will be positive. If you have a negative number and it's being multiplied or divided by a negative number, then its answer will be positive. If you have a positive number and it's being multiplied or divided by a negative number, then the answer is negative. Okay. So, again, if it's an even number, it's always positive. If it's an odd number, it's negative. Okay, that's how the textbook works it. And that's basically it for multiplication and division. Any questions on that? Like I said, as we move along, you'll discover that the multiplication and division part of math is a little bit easier than the addition and subtraction parts of math. Okay. Our next item deals with squared negatives. Okay. This can get a little confusing. So if we look at our notes, it says we have a negative 2 squared is the same as negative 1 times 2 times 2, and that's a negative 4. Let me break that down for you a little bit. Okay. If you have, let's say, a negative 3, and it's being squared, that square as you look at it, is sitting over the number 3. It has nothing to do with the negative sign. It's not attached to the negative sign. It's only attached to the number 3. So that's why the only thing that you're squaring is the 3, not the negative sign. So this would be a negative 9. Now, if you're looking at it and it's in parentheses and it's a negative 3, and it's being squared. This is different. This is including this square is over the 3 and the negative sign because parentheses mean include all. So this is the same as negative 3 times negative 3, and this would give you your positive 9. 
Now, the reason this comes in uh, as something that's uh, important is a lot of you will get these wrong on your test because you'll forget about the rule about the about the square being over the three. So I like to sum it up into one sentence. If a negative number is in parentheses and being squared, the answer is positive. That is the only time it will be positive. Okay? If a negative number is in parentheses and it's squared, that is the only time you will get a positive answer. All other times it will be negative. Okay? No problem. Are there any questions on the negative squares? Because I know that's the part that people get confused about. The only time it gives you a positive answer is when it's in parentheses. All other times it's negative. Okay, and our last one is substitution problems. We're going to do a couple of those later on, but I just wanted to make a note so that you guys had this. Remember I said it was emailed to you and it is in your announcement uh, that if a num when you have to replace a letter with a number, that number needs to be in parentheses because of this squared negative rule will come into effect. Okay, so you must make sure it's in parentheses. When I get to those problems, you'll see what I'm saying and it makes sense. Okay, but that's just a, a note to start with, okay? These are just your little helpful notes for the week, okay? Are we ready to get started? Okay. Oh, I have one other thing I wanted to show you. I'm sorry. One other thing. The parentheses rule basically says it, if it's in parentheses and it's a negative and it's squared, it's positive. It's, you'll hear me say it a few thousand times tonight, all the rules. Tonight we're also going to be learning something called the distributive property. Does anybody remember this distributive property? No, it's not the order of operations. Okay, the distributive property tells us that we multiply whatever is outside of parentheses into what is inside the, the parentheses. So for example, if you had this, you would take that 5 and distribute it. You would multiply it to the x and you would multiply it to the 3. Okay? And then this would give you 5x plus 15 because you multiplied it. You will be seeing stuff that looks like this, though. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And you would do the same thing at the distributive property. A negative times a negative makes a positive 3. Okay? And again, I'll be repeating those a thousand times, too. A negative times a negative makes a positive. A positive times a negative makes a negative. Okay? But we will be using the distributive property this evening as far as getting rid of excess signs within our problems. Okay? And I, that's basically it as far as notes. Now we're going to get into the, the quiz and I'll go over all the questions. And if you guys have anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay? Here's our first question. We're going to do this in steps. Okay? Let me makes it a little easier. Okay, step one. Do the distributive property. Get rid of those parentheses. Okay? So that's our first step. Our first step is to get rid of the parentheses by using the distributive property. So we start here. 
a positive number, to, a positive times the negative is a negative. So that means that's getting rid of this sign and this sign, and that's the new sign is up there on the top. A positive times a negative is a negative. Next, we rewrite the problem. So now it's a 4, a negative 11, a negative 7, and a positive 2. You notice that I did not say 4 minus 11 minus 7 plus 2. I said positive 4, negative 11, negative 7, positive 2. The signs are not the operation. The signs are the sign of the number, what side of the number line it's on. Okay, that's going to be a hard habit to break because a lot of you would think, oh, that's 4 minus 11, and that's 11 minus 7. So, no, it's not 11 minus 7. It's a negative 11 and a negative 7 that have the same sign, so we would add them together, not subtract them. So you have to get that out of your head, okay? Our second step after we rewrite the problem here, we add like signs numbers. Because we know that when they have the same sign, we can add them together. Okay, so we have, let's see, a positive 4 and a positive 2. So what does a positive 4 and a positive 2 added together give us? That is correct. And what does a negative 11 and a negative 7 give us when we add them together? That's right, a negative 18. Always make sure you have that sign with the number, because if you just write the number, it's wrong. It has to have the sign. So now we've Distributive property, we've added like sign numbers, and our last step, our last step, it will click over here, is to subtract. So that's our last step. Now we have to determine, always determine what the sign of the number will be first. We have a positive 6 and a negative 18. What is the sign of our answer going to be? That's right, it is going to be a negative. And then we subtract 18 minus 6, and we get a negative 12. Okay, so let's review our steps. Our first step is get rid of those parentheses with the distributive property, rewrite the problem, add like signs, subtract, and determine the sign of our answer. So instead of bouncing back and forth, going, okay, 4, negative 11, so that's uh that's a negative 7, and then another negative 7 makes it a positive 14, and then a positive, a negative 14, and a po you see what I mean? Instead of doing all that and bouncing back and forth, you can just break it down to two steps. When we add everything that's the same, then I know my next step is just subtract. Okay? We will be doing these a lot, so let's keep going. First thing we look for is parentheses. Yes, we do have a parentheses, so we have a positive times a negative gives us a what? What does a positive times a negative give us? That's right, a negative. Now we're going to rewrite the problem. So we have a negative 8, a positive 4, a negative 9, and a positive 1. Now we look for our same signed numbers. Let's see, we have a negative 8 and a negative 9. So somebody add those together for me. A negative 8 and a negative 9. Perfect. And then 4 and 1. Correct. And our last step is to subtract. So what is Negative 17, positive 5. The signs are different, so we subtract. Perfect. Negative 12. Yeah, 17 is pretty big, so we know it's going to be a negative. So we know it's a negative 12.
Next problem. Now, this one does not have parentheses, so we can skip that step. There are no like sign numbers to add together, so we know we just have to subtract. So we have a positive 5 and a negative 10. The 10 is larger, so our answer will be negative. And we subtract, and we get negative 5. Perfect. This one we look at, again, no parentheses, but they have the same sign. So we add them together, and what do we get? That's right, a negative 11. Perfect. Oh, this one does have parentheses, so we're going to do that first. We have a negative times a negative. What does that give us? A negative times a negative gives us what? That's right. It's going to give us a positive. A negative times a negative gives us a positive. So now we're going to rewrite it. Some people like to put the positive number first and then the negative number. It doesn't really matter. It's your own personal thought. So this is what we get. We get a positive 89 and a negative 56. Their signs are different, so we subtract. And what do you get? That's right, Catherine. We get a positive 33. Any questions on these first five? We've been distributing. We've been doing everything here. So now we're just going to add on more problems to what we already know. We're going to, instead of having all these parentheses, we're going to have numbers on the top and numbers on the bottom. So there is a way to solve these two. Okay, our first step is to solve the top. Our second step is to solve the bottom. And our last step is simply to divide. Okay, so solve the top, solve the bottom, and divide. So our top is a 24 and a negative 16. What does that give us? 24 with a negative 16. An 8, perfect. Now we have the bottom, a negative 2, negative 2. The signs are the same, so we add them together, and what do we get? That's right, a negative 4. Now we have a positive 8 divided by a negative 4 equals what? Positive 8 divided by a negative 4. That's right, Wayne, a negative 2. Because one negative is involved, the answer is negative when we're dealing with our multiplication and division. Let's try another one. What do we get on the top? We have a negative 12 and a negative 24. Their signs are the same, so we get, that's right, a negative 36. Now let's do our bottom here. We have a negative 28 and a positive 22. The signs are different, so we subtract. And we get a negative 6. That's right. Now we do our division. What is negative 36 divided by negative 6? Perfect. A positive 6. Way to go. Now, here we are looking at our negative squares. We have a negative with a 9 squared. What does that equal? A negative with a 9 squared. That's right. It's a negative 81. Remember that negative squares Always give a negative answer, unless it's in parentheses, then it's positive, right? However you want to word it. Negative squares only give a positive answer when they're in parentheses. 
what we went over at the beginning. So we're going to get a negative 81, and then the 4 squared, of course, is 16. So this is what we're left with, a negative 81 and a positive 16. The signs are different, so we subtract, and what do we get? That is correct, a negative 65. Perfect. Let's try another one of these. So our first one is a negative with a 5 squared. What is that? A negative with a 5 squared. Perfect, negative 25. Now th then it has a negative 3 in parentheses squared. What is a negative 3 in parentheses squared? squared. It's a positive 9. Perfect. Then we have a negative 25, positive 9. The signs are different, so we subtract. What do we get? Perfect. A negative 16. Okay, now these are the problems that I was talking about at the beginning. These are when you replace a letter with a number, and it tells you like A is this, B is this, C is this, D is this. Okay, so when we write these, we have, when we replace the, uh, the letter with the new number, we have to use parentheses. Okay, and I'll show you why as soon as I finish writing this one out, I'll show you why we use parentheses. Oops, I forgot the back of that parentheses. Well, if we did not use parentheses, it would come out a little screwy, uh, simply because we would try We wouldn't know what we were doing. If you said, okay, 3, A is negative 2, and minus 6, and B is 4, you'd have that, which looks like 3 minus 2 minus 64, right? But that's not what we're doing. We're doing 3 times negative 2 and negative 6 times 4. So those parentheses tell us that there's multiplication happening. Because a letter next to a number does mean multiplication. It also stops with the confusion, like we have down here on the bottom, that we do have to use the distributive property on that negative times the negative 7. Okay? So that's why we use them. And also, it will help you with your negative squares, because each time the answer will be positive in this case. Okay? We don't have a square yet, but we will in a few problems later. Okay? Now let's do the same thing like we were doing before. It's a negative 6, yes. So we're going to do 3 times a negative 2. What is 3 times negative 2? Oops, why is it not a color? Okay. Okay, that's right. It is negative 6. So we put negative 6. And then, there we go. Then on the top here, we do negative 6 times 4. So what is negative 6 times 4? That's right. It is negative 24. Okay. And on the bottom, we have to distribute here. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so now we have a negative 6 and a negative 24. I don't know why you guys all put 21. There's a lot of 21s there. We're not doing 3 times negative 7. We're doing a negative times a negative 7. 
So we're going to do, now we're doing the top, negative 6 and negative 24. The signs are the same, so we add them together, and what do you get? That's right. It's not a positive 30. It's a negative 30. If you wrote positive 30, your answer would be wrong. Two different numbers, so negative 30. And then a positive 3 and a positive 7 give us a positive 10, right? And what is negative 30 divided by a positive 10? That's right, so the answer is negative 3. So always remember when you are replacing a letter with a number, you must always use parentheses. Okay, when a letter is next to a number, it does mean multiplication. So that's why we use those parentheses to keep that multiplication in the problem still. Let's try another one. Okay, this one has 5C, which is negative 7, and then A is negative 2. That there, and then the bottom is B, which is 4, and D, which is 3. Okay, so now let's look at our top. We'll start here with 5 times negative 7. Right, it's negative 35. And then a negative times a negative 2. Is a positive 2. Okay, and what's the bottom? 4, negative 3. Gives us a big whopping number 1, right? Now we're just going to finish up the top. Negative 35, positive 2. The signs are different, so you subtract, and you get a negative 33. Perfect. Keep going. We'll try another one. Okay, so this one is B which is 4 squared minus A, which is negative 2, and that is squared. So 4 squared is 16. And then we'll just rewrite that outside negative sign. And what is negative 2 in parentheses squared? That's right. It is a positive 4. Now, the reason we didn't do anything with this is most of you are going, well, why didn't you do the distributive property first? Because the order of operations says that exponents happen before multiplication. So we got to do the square first. So we just rewrite it and just leave the sign where it is, okay? And what do we get here with the 16? and a negative 4. Perfect. Are there any questions? Well, it can, it can be that easy. It's just you got to remember the steps and follow each step a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And it'll start to click. Okay, now here's a long one. They gave us a long one. So A is a negative 2, and that's squared. And B is a 4. And C is a negative 7. 
and D is a 3. Oh, they used all the letters. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What is negative 2 in parentheses squared? That's right, a positive 4. And then let's see, let's see, this is distribution. This is distribution. So this is a 4, you said, right? And then let's go to do the other exponent. What is a 3 squared? Nine, okay. And then this four is a positive times a positive, which is a positive four. And then a negative times a negative seven, what does that give us? A positive seven. So everything's positive. So all we have to do is add everything together. And what do we get once we add everything together? You are correct, 24. Perfect. Oops. Sorry, I knocked the battery out of my computer. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Okay. Number 14. You're probably going, well, this one has everything in parentheses. So we're going to start with the parentheses with the negative 7. And a D, which is a 3, and that whole thing is squared. So what does a negative 7 and a negative 3 give us? A negative 7 and a negative 3 gives us a negative 10. That's right. And what does a negative 10 in parentheses give us when it's squared? Perfect, a positive 100. See, that one had a lot of that negative square stuff going on there. Now we're going to settle our brains just a little bit, just a little tiny bit, and we're going to do something called combining like terms. Next week in week three, we focus on algebra, okay? We haven't done algebra yet, but we're going to do algebra next week. And it deals with a lot of variables, unknowns, and letters, etc. So what we have to learn is how to combine these things. To combine like terms, the letters need to be identical. Then you do whatever you need to do to the numbers based on the operation. So 14xy and a negative 10xy will give us something with an xy. So it would be 4xy. So 14xy minus 10xy is 4xy. And that's how it's basically going to work. 3a squared b plus 7a squared b will give us what? That's right, 10a squared b. I won't ask you to type out the a squared b because it's kind of hard to type it. 4r squared plus 10r squared. Is 14r squared. That's right. That's my pirate problem. Arr. <laughs> cheesy joke, cheesy joke. <laughs> Now we have 12w to the third minus 8w to the third. It is 4w to the third. Perfect. And now we're back to doing what we did before. So we had just a little break, just an itty bitty tiny break. So now we go back to what we, we were doing before. And remember, our first step is to. Get rid of parentheses and use the distributive property. So we start here with a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. Then we rewrite the problem. So we have a negative 8. 
positive 8, a negative 6, and a negative 12. And one of the cool things about this problem in particular is this. Negative 8 and positive 8 cancel each other out because that's 0. That's right. So we don't have to worry about this. Then all we have left is negative 6 and negative 12. So those are the same sign, and we add them together, and what do we get? Negative 18. You got it. Here we go again. Here's another one. Same thing, distributive property. A positive times a negative is a negative. Then we rewrite the problem, so negative 4. Positive 13, negative 6, negative 8. This apparently is a very negative problem. So who, someone please add up negative 4, the negative 6, and the negative 8 for me. Negative 4, negative 6, and negative 8. Thank you, negative 18. And negative 18, positive 13, the signs are different, so we subtract, and what do we get? Negative 5. Very good. Okay, now this one does have parentheses. We do our distributive property. A positive times a positive is a positive. Now we get negative 20, positive 14, negative 3, positive 6. Now what do we do? We add the like sign, so we add the negatives. So what does negative 20 and negative 3 give us? Negative 23. And 14 and 6. Perfect. And negative 23, positive 20. Perfect. You got it. Negative 3. Let's try our next one. Distributive property again. Negative times a negative makes a positive. Hey, positive times a negative makes a negative. Then we rewrite this problem. So it's a 5 and a positive 12, then a negative 3 and a negative 8. Ooh, look, they're already organized for us. All the negatives are here and all the positives are in the front. So what is 5 and 12? 5 and 12. And eight, negative 8 and negative 3. Thank you, negative 11. And positive 17, negative 11. Is a positive 6. That's correct. Now this next problem, I'm going to ask for a volunteer to show us, to write out on the board what the next line would be. Who would like to volunteer to do that? Just raise your hand. Okay, Kelly won. Okay, Kelly, do you remember how to use the whiteboard? Scroll over to the long skinny bar there, and then either you can pick the pen there and then write, write the next line. What should we have? Remember, it's hold down the left mouse key to write. Okay. 
It's the third one down. There, that's the, yeah, you got the highlighter, which is fine. You can use that. So the negative 7, a positive 5. A negative 9 and a negative 3. Okay, now we would add all of the like sign numbers together, right? So what is negative 7, negative 9, negative 3 added together? Negative. 19, okay, and then put the plus 5. Okay, and then what's our final answer there? You got it. Perfect. Great job. Now we have the next one. Who wants to try their luck with this one, number 24? Catherine, did you want to do it? You had your hand raised for the last one. Yeah? Yes? No? Okay, go ahead. Show us, show us your work. Very good, that's correct. Now just setting the negatives together and the positives together. Then subtracting. Perfect. Very good. I think you guys got this. We have one left. Now, Vishon, I saw that you put your hand up. Did you want to try this one? Go for it. That's perfect. So the positive four. She did the negative fourteen and the negative. You did the negative fourteen, and the negative seven. Okay. Next line. The negative. Negative twenty-one. Positive 15, okay. We notice that the signs are different, so we're going to subtract to get our final answer, which will be what? Check the sign. 21 is bigger than 15. There you go. There you go. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much for doing that, you guys. I know a lot of people don't like to write on the board. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of things I wanted to remind you of. I have, uh, if you have emailed me 
since Monday at 3 o'clock, I have not been getting your emails. So if you did email me, I'm sorry if I didn't respond. Uh, somehow Kaiser got a phishing email that sent out like a few thousand emails and blocked our servers from receiving and sending emails. So they have been down until about 3 o'clock today. So if you tried to email me, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. I just got all the emails today. <laughs> Um, also, um, if you're going in to do your discussion board question this week, this week you are to create a problem that requires the use of order of operation. Then you are to solve a classmate's problem, but when you solve your classmate's problem, you have to show with and without the order of operation. So your first one, you'll use the order of operation, and then in the second one, you won't. Now, here's the tricky part. Your without cannot match another student's response to that question. There are several ways to solve a problem without using the order of operations. You don't have to go left to right. You can bounce around. So the, diff the answer should be different in the without order of operations section, OK? If you did not post, like you did answer someone's question, but you did not post with and without, it was deleted, okay, so just so that you're prepared, it was deleted, and you did receive an email from me. Like I said, our email has been down, so it's probably you're getting them now, but I did send you an email to please go back in and redo, a pro redo the problem. The reason it was deleted was to avoid confusion, because what happens is if you posted it in there wrong, someone comes in and goes, gee, how do I post it? And they look at yours, which is wrong, and then they do the same thing, and they get it wrong, too. So just to avoid confusion, it, it was removed, but you were emailed to let you know. Also, this week with the weekly summary, yes, you need to do both with and without the order of operations in one post. OK? Like I said, I emailed you if I wanted you to redo it. So weekly summary questions this week. Remember, you are only to choose five of the ten. And questions one and two of this week require that you draw the number line and then actually show its use. So that one's a little bit, those two are a little hard. Plus, they have three additional questions you have to answer as well, OK? Question three and four require you to solve the problem and to also tell me which rule you use to find the answer. Now, those rules were when the signs are the same, we add them together. When the signs are different, we subtract. Those are the rules we're looking for, OK? Let's see, was there any questions? Yes, you are supposed to post on separate days. Kaiser requires three days of login to receive, to receive attendance. Uh, let's see. There is no journal this week. The only journal you have is if you were doing uh, a review of the live chat, if you weren't attending live. It doesn't include, you have to do something in the class for it to record your time. OK? Also, let's see, your discussion, if you click on this week and you click on discussion, the question's right there, and so are the weekly summaries. If it's not there, click on the discussion tab and it'll be there. But it is under the weeks. I went in and changed those for everybody so that they would be there. You have to have a you have to be clicked in somewhere, either taking a test, taking a quiz, doing a discussion board, doing a weekly summary, reviewing a live chat. You have to actually be doing something in the class for the time to log in. If you just go in and turn it on, it's not logging in your attendance. No, it's log in three days in the week, not three days on your discussion, three days in the week. One day could be taking your quiz. One day could be taking your test. One day can be doing your discussion questions in your weekly summary. It's just three times a week you're supposed to log in. OK? Is there any other questions? Okay, and like I said, those three days can be any day you want. If you're here, that's one day, so you're good. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as long as it's just three different days.
And I think the quickest one is the discussion. You just go in and post something and leave. <laughs> okay? But if you guys have no further questions, you are free to go. You're welcome. I'll see you next week, same time. You too. Yes, it is recorded. So after everybody logs out, give it about five or ten minutes to reset. I think it resets after nine o'clock. Yeah, you'll have to give it to like nine o five for it to reset, and then you'll be able to watch it. Because I think it still does the live feed until nine. No problem. And don't forget to post a summary of it, okay? So, or your notes in your journal, okay? You're welcome. Have a good night. I shall try. <laughs>